desires family. He started the church because he wanted a family. He created mankind because he wanted a family. Yes, sir. Some of your relatives may not be as close as family members as some people in the church. Listen, I know, or I believe, or I think, that some of my ancestors may be in hell today. They were my earthly family. You're my eternal family. If you're in Christ, and He's in you, and He's your Lord and your Savior, and you're doing your best to just love Him and walk every day with Him, we're going to spend eternity together. That is reality. It's not no fairy tale. So don't just look at the natural side of things when you think about family. Your family is the person sitting next to you. If they're born again, if they're saved, they're going to heaven. Jesus is in them. The Spirit of God's in them. Family. Yes, sir. And we treat each other like family. Amen. And that's not always easy. <laughs> if we think about just treating them after a natural way, then it can be conflict and friction. But if we treat them like the Bible says, and we practice it like the Bible says, you know, bear one another's burdens, or in other words, put up with each other's faults and shortcomings. <laughs> All right? So, moving on. Praise the Lord. Oh, man. Just so much. I don't want to have to. Oh, man. Oh. Ah. Wow. I didn't realize that. One time flies. When you're having fun. All right, well, I guess let me just recap real quick and we'll close because I got more and I got a whole other chapter. And I, ain't out, and I ain't out of this chapter yet. And I got some good stuff at the end of this chapter. How Paul handled all this stuff and kept out of trouble. Seven points that he did. Right there. Bang, 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 bang. But we're not going to get to that every day. So, what kind of heart should we have? Yeah, pure heart. That's good. Lovely, joyful, cheerful. A giving heart. A liberal heart. Not self-seeking. Not a hypocritical heart. A sincere heart in our giving. Not one that is got an attachment on the end of the gift when it's given you give for the sole purpose of blessing the other person expecting nothing in return for yourself from that person that's the start that's the beginning of where you're going to begin to prosper now if you're not a tither you're not a giver you need to do that too because it all goes back to your heart why do I want to tithe? Because I want to bless God. I am grateful to Him. I love Him because what He has done for me. And I know that if He has done anything for me, I won't have nothing. I will just be gone like a bowl of dust going down the road. I'm a history without Him. I'm nothing. And so, just as He only asked me as a, an expression of love is to give Him 10%. And what's 10%? That's a dime out of a dollar. Can you buy a bubble gum, a piece of bubble gum for that these days? So come on. So let, let's bow your head. Father, we thank you today for your word. And Lord, we ask you to seal this in our hearts by your spirit and by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we trust that your spirit will continue to communicate with us on these things, teaching us, unfolding to us, 
greater things in our lives that we need to adjust and change or improve upon or continue in so that we can walk in your best and receive all that you have us, that you're glorified in all of us and all that we do each day. And Father, if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you as Jesus, as Lord and Savior, Father, I would ask right now that you move on these people's heart by your if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have prosperity. You don't have any hope for prosperity. But Jesus is your hope. He is the foundation. He is the doorway to heaven. He is the way out of where you are and the way in to where you want to go. And into the better things that he has for you that you haven't even thought of yet. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Nobody's looking around. If, you, if your heart is pounding and you're just scared about raising your hand, well, that's just your flesh and the devil trying to tell you don't do it. But you need to. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Because it affects now and it affects eternity. If you don't know Jesus, raise your hand. Look at him one more time. I trust everybody that has been born again. If you need prayer, we're here for you. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can raise your hand and we'll pray for you. All right, well, praise the Lord. Uh, you can look up. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for uh, bearing with me. Did you receive anything today? Did anybody get any help? Any understanding? Any adjustments? Any, any light that you need to improve so that you can be the greatest success? Well, good. Well, praise the Lord. Give him a thank you for ministering to the Lord God. We got some more associates out here, amen. And uh, we plan on utilizing them more, praise God. Uh, not just because Pastor Steve was ill. He would have been here today even. And he had already planned on having him. So that's good, amen. So we looked at the progress of our heart today, did we not? Yes. We looked at uh, how uh, poverty really is. What it is, what it looks like what people live like. You know, a lot of times, let's just say something, I'm not going to come back and reach behind him, but we who are very blessed, sometimes it's good to be reminded about the way it used to be when we weren't blessed, because there are people all around us that still fight with things in their life. And so, you know, I would really hate, I, I, when I was in Croatia, I had a girl that was telling me she was so hungry for God, she was desperate, she was suicidal. And she said she was sitting on a park bench and she said these Christians came up and they were so busy looking at the people that were drinking and, and acting in the flesh. They were all on them. And she was the one, just one bench over, had been crying for help. That's not what we want to be, amen? And so uh, you may say, well, I'm so tired of hearing about prosperity. Well, there's where you need to come in, and that's why God sent you today, to hear on prosperity. Because out of the treasure of our heart, if something bothers us, then we know that there's something not right inside. I know my uncle was like that. He, he was away from the Lord, and, and my other, his other brother encouraged him to come to church. And when he finally came, the minister ministered on giving. And uh, it's like, don't you want to be blessed? Of course we want to be blessed. Well, how are we going to learn to be blessed if we don't teach it in the church of oh, God? Amen. Amen. Just like we're teaching on love. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, different traits and personalities. If you're a supervisor or a manager or if you have children, you can't treat your children the same and, and deal with them because they have different personality traits. You don't treat a golden retriever the same as you would an otter. A, a retriever's over there being good and an otter swimming and jumping up and down. There are different varieties of traits. We're going to learn that tonight. We're going to learn how to walk in love and live one day at a time. The, the gospel preaches and covers every area of our life. Amen? And so we talked about this. The Basically, I didn't get a title, but what I titled it is uh, looking at the progress of our heart. You know, 
God is always moving us up. Amen? And so we learned about giving and the state of a heart on giving and motives and how to have the right motives. Amen? Learned about the gift of grace of giving. There is a grace for prosperity. We have a grace for prosperity. As we have a grace for saving, we have a grace for prosperity. That means we can never be in lack again if we step into this grace. That's what he taught today. He taught about that Jesus never had to face lack ever again. Hallelujah! That means we're amply supplied for every good work. It isn't a fairy tale message. It's the truth. That's what Jesus did. Amen? And so we need to be reminded of that. Amen? And we learned about how he became poor. We learned how to give, how the works of our hands could be, the progression of our heart, and then we learned we're a family. We're hammering on the family. You know why? Because God's hammering on the family. He's coming back soon. Isn't that great? He is coming back. And he's not coming back for the Lone Rangers. He's coming back for the people that are in the family of God. He said in the book of Revelations, I'm saying these letters to the churches. Not to the people that are out playing. No, it's to the churches. He doesn't even include them. He doesn't even talk to them. He's talking to the churches because he's coming back for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so it was some good word today. Praise God. Yes. Our service tonight. I'll be ministering on this personality trace. You want to come and be blessed. Amen. And uh, I want to introduce a new couple to our family. Please stand, Tawny. This is her new husband, Derek. Yeah. Derek Cantrell and Tawny Cantrell. They got married. And uh, they have known each other for quite a long time. And uh, we're very happy to meet you, brother. God bless you. Let's make them feel very friendly. And um, God is good, isn't he? Let's just give the Lord a yay. He is a yay God. Amen. Um, We also want to do one more thing. Can we have all of the ladies in our church stand? And we want to go ahead. Sister Jan, go ahead and play that. We're going to go out uh, just honoring ladies. I'm not the only lady in here. Man, if you mean you go. Uh, we are going to honor you today. <laughs> not with this. We're going to honor. We're going to preach for a prop. No. We're going to honor you today with uh, just saying happy Valentine's Day. We know that it is this coming week, and we don't want you gentlemen to forget about it. But in case you have, we already got your back covered. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, our precious little girls, we're going to bring them to you. Don't leave without your rose. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And hopefully we'll get tonight. Amen. Everybody. Praise God. Every woman. Every woman. Yay. Hug somebody as you go out. We love you in the love of the Lord. God bless you. I think you got a present on the credenza out there. To present you 